the ultimate Five Nights at Freddy's iceberg. If you're like me and you want to know everything about the Five Nights at Freddy's franchise, then this iceberg is for you. If you're unfamiliar with the iceberg concept, basically you start at the tip and work your way downwards. As you continue to work your way downwards, things only- I mean, there are things in here which will make your skin crawl and you won't believe the end of this video. So let's start at the beginning, tier 1 common knowledge. The stay stage screen. The infamous unused stay screen image where all characters are looking towards the security camera. This was only ever seen in the game's trailer and never present in the game's full release, despite numerous people on very rare occasion having claimed to have seen it, even though there's no evidence for this. This is further cemented in the official book, claiming it was never implemented in the game. The reason so many people could have claimed to have seen this could be partially down to the Mandela effect. The Bite of 83 and of 87 The Bite of 83 was an important but terrifying event that took place within the year 1983 in Five Nights at Freddy's 4, making it one of the first ever events in the series history. It shows a scene where the crying child gets laughed at by the older brother and youngsters and Michael Afton wanting to scare him. Michael's gang make the crying child get close to Fredbear and gets his head into Fredbear's mouth. Fredbear's mouth eventually would shut on the crying child's head, killing him once and for all. Similar to this was the Bite of 87. The details of this attack and the identity of the animatronic responsible are currently unknown, but it allegedly caused the victim to lose the frontal lobe of their brain. The victim survived the attack. As a result of the incident, the animatronics were no longer allowed to wander around the building during the daytime. The management decided to limit their free roaming mode to nighttime. Scott Cawthon is the phone guy. Phone guy is the person who calls you during the beginning of each night in Five Nights at Freddy's. He's mainly there to establish the rules and provide tips to the player. Not many people realize that the voice actor of the phone guy is the game's creator, Scott Cawthon. Bonus information, the one who is implied to have killed the phone guy is actually Golden Freddy. The Five Nights at Freddy's book series. As well as being a popular video game franchise, and now a movie, it also has its own string of books. The books focus on different events around different pizza plexes, starting with the first game all the way up to the latest Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. It is important to note, however, that although these books are very much similar to the games, the events in the books are not canon to the games. They're their own separate lore. Purple Guy is William Afton. William Afton, also known as the Purple Guy and Springtrap, was the main antagonist at Five Nights at Freddy's franchise, prior to the Mimic. In the early days of Five Nights at Freddy's, he was very much a mysterious figure, but nowadays it is very much canon that William Afton is Purple Guy. Paper Pals The Paper Pals are a decoration in Five Nights at Freddy's 2 in Party Room 4, in FNAF 3 in The Office, and in Ultimate Custom Night as a playable character in FNAF World. They also make an appearance in Security Breach's DLC, Ruin. They are three paper plate characters that are hung on the wall, and the one in the center appears to be a purple crying bunny. The one right of it in the center looks like Freddy Frazbear with a glued on brown circle appearing to be Freddy's upper jaw. And the one on the left is very mysterious, it is the only one that doesn't look like the animatronics, although it may be BB, FNAF original springlock suits. Before Five Nights at Freddy's actually had animatronics, they had springlock suits. These are suits that function as animatronics and costumes in a different mode, which can be switched back and forth by using a crank which winds up the suit. They are extremely dangerous. If the suit activates whilst the wearer is inside of it, their body will be bludgeoned severely and their eyes replaced with the electronic suit, causing them to be crushed and killed. These were obviously discontinued before the events of Five Nights at Freddy's 1. They were likely introduced to Fredbear's family diner at some point, likely before or during the events of 1983. The Shadow Animatronics The Shadow Animatronics are ghost-like entities with an unknown place of origin, whereabouts and history throughout the franchise. The Shadow Animatronics lack solid forms as they appear as shadowy supernatural spectres with forms based on the Fazbear Entertainment animatronics. Most of them have very dark colours while sporting glowing white eyes and teeth. FNAF 2 and 4 are prequels. Not everyone actually realises that FNAF 2 and 4 was set before the events of the original Five Nights at Freddy's game. Five Nights at Freddy's 2 was set sometime after the events of 1983, although the animatronics seem more advanced than 1. The same thing goes for Five Nights at Freddy's 4, where you're meant to be playing as William Afton's child in his bedroom scared of the animatronics. William Afton's child, also known as the Crying Child or Evan Afton, was killed, as we know, at the bite of 83. So the fact you're playing as him in FNAF 4 signifies it's way before the events of the first game. It's me text. <laughs> It's Me is an easter egg that appears in FNAF 1 and FNAF 2, an animatronic who shows that It's Me easter egg before it appears is Golden Freddy. When Golden Freddy appears in FNAF 1 office for a short second, it flashes It's Me. 
What that It's Me text actually means is that Golden Freddy is supposedly controlled by the Afton family's little brother, aka the crying child, and he's trying to recognize the security guard, which is his brother, and tells his brother that it's him in the suit, hence why he says It's Me to his brother the security guard. Bread Bay. Bread Bay is an unwithered version of Nightmare Fred Bay. He's a bright yellow with a brown stomach, purple bow tie, and a purple hat with a black stripe around it. Bread Bay is actually an unintentional moist meme. He is all powerful being and was originally an attempt to make an unwithered and unnightmared Fred Bay, but was laughed at for its shocked expression and poor editing. Tier 2, heading further down the iceberg. We're now leaving the office and heading into Pirate's Cove, so to speak. There's some really strange things in this iceberg with Toy Chica's missing beak and the Yellow Bay. Sparky the Dog. In the early days of the game's lifespan, someone began to spread rumors about a hidden six animatronic named Sparky the Dog. Sure enough, screenshots began to crop up on Tumblr. Reportedly, Sparky the One-Armed Dog was a non-violent and would never attack the player, only appearing occasionally in the backstage doorway. However, it was eventually revealed as a hoax by its creators, with all the screenshots being photoshopped. Basically, the dog animatronic does not exist. However, that was until Five Nights at Freddy's the movie released, as he made a surprise appearance in the movie. Ironically enough, the appearance took place backstage, where the hoax originally began. So thus, Sparky the dog is now canon in the FNAF universe. Sugar the Cat Sugar the Cat was an animatronic entertainer at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza and a minor antagonist in the Return to Freddy's classic. The concept of Sugar the Cat was stolen from Emil Mako's fan-made animatronic, Candy the Cat. It is a blue cat and has a red tie, which can easily be seen when it's hiding behind the poster in the dining area. It is a toy animatronic and the only toy animatronic produced after the others were scrapped. Due to it obviously being stolen from Emil Mako, a copyright issue followed and was never actually put into the game. Game, Mangle's gender. There's been a huge debate in the fandom whether Mangle is female or male. Mangle is featured in custom night mode called Ladies Night, but is also referred to with he, him pronouns by the phone guy. They have been referred to with he, him, her, and they and them pronouns. Scott Cawthon eventually answers Mangle's gender with yes, leaving fans to still speculate to this day. Toy Chica's missing beak. When you see Toy Chica on the stage, she has her beak, but when she leaves, Toy Chica actually takes off her beak for some reason. Many people have speculated that the reason she takes off her beak is when she leaves the stage, she can bite you. From what we know, her beak is really small and she can't open her mouth wide, so she takes off her beak. It is unknown where she places her beak though. It was however confirmed in a late interview with Scott Cawthon with Dorco that she was not scary enough so he gave her that secondary design for when she leaves the stage, so that she would be more scary. That's solving the missing peak issue. Chipper and Sons Lumberco. Before Scott Coffin had made Five Nights at Freddy's, he made a game called Chipper and Sons Lumberco. It follows a story of a lumber company run by a chipper and a humanoid beaver whose son Tyke was a playable character. The characters from this game were eventually featured in the Five Nights at Freddy's franchise, making several appearances throughout its history. He also becomes the mascot for L Chips, which we see in Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. Marionette vs Puppet The puppet in the Five Nights at Freddy's franchise is also called the marionette in other versions of the game. This confused many fans into believing the puppet and the marionette were completely separate and their own entities, which is not true. The entity was originally called the marionette, but then Scott Cawthon decided to change it to the name the puppet. So why was the marionette's name changed to the puppet? Well, in French, marionette means little Mary. During the Middle Ages, string puppets were often used in France to depict Bible events, with the Virgin Mary being a popular character, hence the name. So puppet seemed much more fitting as opposed to marionette. The Fazbear Fan Initiative The Fazbear Fanverse Initiative, also simply known as the Fazbear Fanverse, is a collaboration by Scott Cawthon and creators of popular Five Nights at Freddy's fan games. This project is, in Scott's own words, a giant collaboration involving several fan game creators, and the goal of the project is actually to support creators of some of the most popular Fan Freddy games, meaning he would essentially help fund the development of new games for the series. And essentially, the games they make would then be considered canon to the FNAF universe. Universe. However, it's important to note that not all fan games will get officially endorsed or licensed for the initiative due to copyrights, vulgar content, etc. Some examples are Five Nights at Freddy's Treasure Island, Five Nights at Wario's, Day Shift at Freddy's, and Five Nights at Freddy's Fuckboys.
the Yellow Bay. The Yellow Bay, or Golden Freddy as it's known to by fans, is a mysterious ghost-like entity who takes on the form of a yellow animatronic bay. He plays a prominent role in the Five Nights at Freddy's series, although his origins are cryptic and unknown. Despite the good ending of the game presumably showing his soul to be set free, it is speculated that the spirit refuses. Foxy is actually a good guy. Many people believe that Foxy the animatronic in the first game is actually a good guy because Foxy's purpose in the game is to make sure the player frequently checks the video feed. This is meant to keep the player immersed in the horror of the game instead of exploiting the game's mechanic and simply camping out the office. So this led many fans to believe that Foxy is actually trying to help the player by telling them to keep their eyes on the camera for the real nasty animatronics. Tier 3, heading further below the iceberg, leaving Pirate's Cove and going into the main hall. There's some great things in this, such as Springtrap in the newspaper, Funtime Bonnie, Candy Cadet stories, things start to take a dark turn at this point. Handprint on Freddy's face. In a render from one of the games, you can clearly see what looks like a handprint on Freddy Fazbear's face. No one actually knows what the handprints mean, but a popular theory is that Freddy caused the bite of 87. It is believed that right before the bite, someone tried to push him back, which obviously failed. There's also another theory that the handprint is actually Freddy's himself, where he's tried to rip himself apart. Further to this, there's also a handprint on Golden Freddy's face. Springtrap in the newspaper. At the ending of FNAF 3, you can clearly see a newspaper, but if you brighten this newspaper up, you actually see an image of Springtrap in the top right corner, showing in fact that he is alive after the events of Five Nights at Freddy's 3. Funtime Bonnie. In Five Nights at Freddy's sister location, we see many Funtime variants of the animatronics, such as Funtime Freddy, Funtime Foxy, but we never actually see a Funtime Bonnie. We do see a true iteration of Bonnie in Cam 2 his torso and head are at the end of the short hallway, but Scott Cawthon himself confirmed that Funtime Bonnie was never a thing and was never intended to be in sister location. Funtime Puppet in sister location trailer. During the initial trailer for Five Nights at Freddy's sister location, we see Foxy and and Foxy is obviously very metallic. In Foxy's metallic reflection, we can see what only looked like the puppet. Many people theorized for years on who this was, what it could actually be, whether it was the puppet from the original Five Nights at Freddy's 2, but what it turned out to be was Scott put the models close to each other when he was conducting the trailer, and it just turns out to be Baby shown in Funtime Foxy's reflection. Bonnie running down hallway. In the original Five Nights at Freddy's trailer, we see Bonnie running down a hallway. Obviously in the game, this never happened, we never see Bonnie run down the hallway, it's always Foxy. The reason we see Bonnie running down the hallway, not Foxy, is they were planning to keep Foxy a reveal slash a secret for the final release of the game. Five Nights at Freddy's Kickstarter Before Five Nights at Freddy's was released on Steam for purchase, Scott Cawthon actually decided to go through the Kickstarter program in June. This was taken down for some unknown reason and then was later published in August on Steam. My only guess is that Scott actually found a publisher before he decided to click that button on Kickstarter. The original Kickstarter page is still up there for people to view though. Candy Cadet Stories Candy Cadet, or Cadet Ghost in Ultimate Custom Night Game Files, is a viable robot which tells the player stories and gives out candy. There are three known stories that Candy Cadet will tell you after he gives you candy. The possibility of hearing a story is very difficult and takes a fond memory of the colour schemes that quickly flash on him. All of his stories have a similar theme of destruction of five things or five things being melted into one. This could possibly be related to the murder of the five children, the five members of the Afton family, the five animatronics, forming Ennard, the destruction of five animatronics, roaming the underground of the FFPS pizzeria, or something else that hasn't yet been discovered. Funtime Freddy is German. During the original voice recordings for Funtime Freddy, it was intended for him to actually be German. This was eventually cut and they decided to keep the normal voice lines. However, there are some clips of him with a German accent. Have a listen. <laughs> Hello, little children. Glad to see you back again. Come closer, I'll sing a song for you! Fun Times Freddy's unused voice lines. Now this one's extremely interesting. Funtime Freddy has a load of voice lines that were unused for the game as revealed from Matt Pat's livestream video with Kellen Goff. Before the livestream, however, Kellen Goff refused to show Funtime Freddy's unused dialogue lines without Scott Cawthon's permission. He also revealed in that livestream that Funtime Freddy was once intended to have a German accent. There are so many voice lines, but I'll pick out a standout few. Come closer, I'll sing a song for you. This is my friend Bon Bon. Say hi, Bon Bon. Oh, birthday boy, 
come out, come out wherever you are! You sure? Okay, let's go get him in three, two, one! Ballora is Afton's wife. Ballora is a major antagonist and ballerina dancer and gif. If you've been around a while, you will know about the Charlie gif. It's said that if you looked at it for more than 40 seconds, you would go insane. But obviously, if you know anything about this gif, it's totally untrue. As the Charlie gif never actually existed. It was a joke. Like the WDW simulation of the human brain or the Wario apparition, Charlie gif doesn't exist. Though if it did, it probably was just her jumping through a window or fading away or something. Or oh, am I just having you on? Was it real? Is there a creepy pasta river out there? Who knows? The cut content lives mechanic. In FNAF 1, 2 and 3, if you dig into the game's files, you can find a deleted mechanic for lives. Assumingly, this would be if you get jump scared, you'd lose a life rather than completely die in, in itself. For whatever reason, this was cut from the game and I think it was a good choice. Tier 4, heading below the iceberg, we're now entering parts and service where no one really goes and we find all the dark and mysterious things. There's some really great things in this tier such as Vanny's Mask and Dark Spring Trap. Scott's Nightmare with Bonnie. According to a Five Nights at Ready's wiki post, which cites a comment of Cawthon's in a now-deleted forum thread, the FNAF creator once had a chilling nightmare about Bonnie, the blue animatronic rabbit. In the dream, Cawthon is reported to have spotted Bonnie standing in the hall outside of his bedroom, having to hold the door shut to stop them from entering. Interestingly enough, Cawthon's nightmare was elaborate enough to include in-the-game mechanics. Puppet in FNAF 1 location. The Give Gifts Give Life minigame depicts the marionette giving the MCI victims gifts and new life through the animatronics heads. As well as this, the FNAF 2 cutscene reveals the marionette still had a presence even in the original restaurant that was first shown in FNAF 1. So in a nutshell, confirming the puppet was indeed in FNAF 1. Yendo. Yendo is a fun-time endoskeleton and a minor antagonist from the Five Nights at Freddy's sister location. Despite his small role in the main game, he also appears in Custom Night. Yendo is an endoskeleton strongly similar to Funtime Freddy's. He has a complete lack of suit shell, which completely reveal all the endoskeleton and the wirings, somewhat resembling human muscle layers. Although it has three main differences, a lack of inner face plates, both hands while lacking a hand puppet, the yellow irises rather than Funtime Freddy's hazel blue, and if observed closely, his nose looks different compared to Funtime Freddy's, being slightly flatter. Drowning in the lake. The drowning in the lake ending is an ending which we find in FNAF World and is an extremely strange one at that. This ending is found in a similar fashion as the fourth glitch ending with some minor changes at the end. If you pace back and forth above the lake with the Freddy Spite, it should begin to shift closer and closer to the lake before eventually falling in. Hitting the arrow keys back and forth will cause Freddy to struggle until he goes completely under the water. He will then be shown falling in the middle of a black screen and after about two minutes the screen will cut to a figure who seems to have their back to the player and arms around two others. The background will flash many colours and stay like this until the player closes the game via the task menu or presses F2 to restart the game. This ending still hasn't been solved to this day but many people believe that the actual shadows may be Scott with his two sons looking into the computer screen as he wanted FNAF World to be his last FNAF game. Dark Springtrap Dark Springtrap is Springtrap as he appears in the cutscene after beating Golden Freddy mode on very hard in the Five Nights at Freddy's sister location, Custom Night. The difference he has from Springtrap is that he is missing an eye wire and pelvis. He has a shadowy, possibly fire damaged look, seemingly just to confirm he's still around. Mini Rena in Popcorn There is an extremely rare easter egg in sister location during the end of night sequences, where a Mini Rena can pop out of your popcorn bucket. Get Princess Quest Princess Quest is an in-universe video game franchise that appears in both the mobile port of Five Nights at Freddy's Help Wanted and Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. In the Help Wanted mobile port, the minigame can be accessed from the Freddy Fazbear Virtual Experience hub room. In Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach, though, it can be accessed through the arcade cabinets. Beating all three princess quests will grant the player a secret ending in which Gregory frees Vanessa of Glitch Trap's control. The princess in Princess Quest may be a manifestation of Golden Freddy trying to defeat William and bring him down to make up for the mistake of accidentally allowing William to return to begin with, as in the files, the princess is named Cassidy. Further to this, in the walkway section of Princess Quest 3, Chica can be seen watching the princess. This may be a reference to how Susie, the girl who possesses Chica, was William Afton's first victim. 
FNAF 1 was planned to be the last game. Before Scott Corfin had made Five Nights at Freddy's, he made other various games with little to no success. He decided that FNAF 1 would be his last game if it was not successful. Lucky for him, it was a success and he continued. Otherwise, if it had flopped, he would not be making games today. Golden Freddy in Five Nights at Freddy's 3 Believe it or not, Golden Freddy actually makes a minor appearance in Five Nights at Freddy's 3 in the minigame Stage 01 and a brief appearance in the Glitch minigame. Golden Freddy's mask is also worn by the child at the end of the Happiest Day minigame. In the Stage 01 minigame, Golden Freddy looks exceedingly different from how he did in the original games. And the Stage 01 Golden Freddy is the only Freddy counterpart whose hat colour is different than the rest, being brown. Vanny's Mask Vanny's Mask, or the Security Mask, is an advanced headset that allows the wearer to interface with a Virtual Augmented Neural Network Integration Unit, Whew, or Vanny for short. Vanny integrated this mask into her costume, but what is extremely interesting is the fact that she has two handprints on the back of her mask and one on the back of her torso. Why these handprints are on there, no one really knows. But fans have speculated it could be where she was taking on and off the suit. Tier 5, heading into the abyss. We're now heading into the back rooms from parts and service. All the discarded, dark, forgotten things live here. FNAF was based on real Chuck E. Cheese murders. Back when the games were still relatively new, people speculated that they were based off a real murder in Chuck E. Cheese restaurant in the year 1993, especially as the first FNAF game was based in the 1990s. It is true that Five Nights at Freddy's was based on Chuck E. Cheese, or formerly Showbiz Pizza, or at least took some inspiration, but the main inspiration came from his older games, Chipper Sons and Lumberco. The game's visuals were criticised for the characters looking like scary animatronic animals. Scott was heartbroken by the criticism and almost gave up making the game entirely. But no, the game was not based on the murders in the Chuck E. Cheese. Five Nights at Freddy's 1 Scream Origin Not many people actually realise where the original Scream Origin came from. It's from a scene from the 1981 British science fiction horror film Insomnoid, where a woman named Sandy played by an English film stage and television actress Judy Jason, gives birth to a baby alien and her scream is actually taken from that. Mike Kill All Back when the original FNAF 2 trailer released, it featured a segment where there was kids singing London Bridge is falling down. But if you actually play this bit backwards, it actually says Mike Kill All. <coughs> Many fans had believed that this was a secret message in the FNAF 2 trailer, but it just turns out it's a coincidence. The Crying Cupcake In the Chica's Party minigame in the FNAF 3, you can access an area with what appears to be crying cupcakes, and one of them even chases you but can't kill you. They say they represent the 5 MCI and the one following you actually represents Golden Freddy. FNAF in Gravity Falls There's an episode in Gravity Falls where it features animatronics very much like the FNAF characters which come alive and try and hunt the guests. Many people had believed that this was a FNAF reference in Gravity Falls but it's actually a pure coincidence. As the script was written and the episode was almost done with animating before FNAF was even released. So although it seems like a reference, it's more to the fact that Gravity Falls was actually predicting FNAF but the reality is it was just a pure coincidence. Swearing in FNAF World In the Foxy Fighters minigame of Update 1.20, JJ has an unused voice clip including a sway that would probably play after the nighttime Chica's plane is shut down. It features her saying, Now I'm going to kick your ass! Wait, what? I, I can't see that. This voice line was likely unused due to it being inappropriate and containing profanity and suited for players, but I find that extremely insane because the entire game is focused on killing and little kids being stuffed in animatronic objects. Vanny's knife. In the original Five Nights at Freddy's trailer and some stills, Vanny is appeared to be holding a knife. Many people had speculated that there was some secret meaning for this, but it was actually a possible decision by Scott, as most merch now features Vanny or William Spring Bonnie using a pizza cutter instead of a knife. It was actually done because of censorship. They did the same thing with Gregory saying he was broken rather than bleeding. Scott has mentioned also previous that he prefers to avoid real life violence, so example, no explicit weapons such as knives and guns. So unfortunately, we're unlikely to see Freddy holding a Glock anytime soon. LOLBIT MASK 
Lobbit is an animatronic in Five Nights at Freddy's sister location. Lobbit appears as an easter egg in the main game as an antagonist in Custom Night. The animatronic greatly resembles Funtime Foxy with a few recolors. And very rarely, when entering the primary control module, Enid's mask will be replaced with Lobbit's mask. And although Lobbit is shown to have a body in FNAF World, neither Lobbit's endoskeleton nor their lower body have been shown in sister location. And it is unknown if Lobbit can even open its faceplate. Scott listens to Mark. Markiplier and the Finna franchise have a long history. He is, of course, the king of Five Nights at Freddy's, and he popularized it and is the reason it got so famous. So it seems only natural that his creator, Scott Cawthon, listens to Markiplier in his input into the franchise. There's been several iterations where Mark has seemingly predicted the outcome of FNAF lore or game mechanics. For example, where he says Foxy should be replaced by a character called Roxy. Lo and behold, that happens in Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. Obviously, this has not been outright confirmed by either the party, but it is a huge speculation within the community. For some reason, what the hell? Purple guy! Oh, good, good. Second night, great. The Hanging Mangle. Back when Five Nights at Freddy's sister location was due for release, Scott Corvin added a black and white teaser with a Hanging Mangle. This Hanging Mangle basically foreshadowed events on night five of the sister location where you see a hanging technician. But in actual fact, this has been debunked. It's not Mangle who's hanging, it's actually Withered Toy Foxy. Mangle doesn't have the faceplates or the structure of Funtime Foxy. This is it the abyss, the darkness of the iceberg, and we've moved on to what we would call the bad ending. This is all the darkest stuff you can find on FNAF and things you wouldn't really hear of at all unless you're a true super hardened fan. And even then, I'll be surprised if you've heard of some of this. AftonRobotics.com Everyone knows that William Afton had his own robotics company which made the animatronics. And believe it or not, there is actually an Afton Robotics website, although there is no information to show whatsoever. The site is still accessible, however, but nothing is displayed whatsoever. If anyone has any information on this, please let me know in the comments below. The Band Five Nights at Freddy games. Five Nights at Freddy's 3 was actually a game before Five Nights at Freddy's 3, the official version, came out. There was a fan version called Five Nights at Freddy's 3, which Scott Coffin told them to take down. Obviously there was various reasons, one because it wasn't official, but this Five Nights at Freddy's free unofficial game used copyrighted content in its release. And if you remember from earlier I talked about Sugar the Cat, the Sugar the Cat was used in this game where it was stolen from its respectful owners. Needless to say, Scott Coffin asked this to be taken down immediately or further action would have been taken against his creator. Some examples are Five Nights at Freddy's Treasure Island, Five Nights at Wario's Day Shift at Freddy's and Five Nights at Freddy's Fuckboys. Mike Bot. Mike Bot is the theory that Michael Afton is an android with a synthetic human flesh like Terminator instead of a normal biological human. It was created by Blackfoot Ferret and popularized by MatPat. What makes this even more interesting is the fact that Scott was asked about it and he never debunked it at all. One piece of evidence for it is that something similar happened in one of the novels, with that logic being Scott says that this is something that can happen in the FNAF universe, so it could happen here too. Chica's missing eyes. Similar to where Toy Chica removes her beak, we also see Toy Chica remove her eyes before she leaves the stage. But the reason is, she doesn't actually remove her eyes. A lot of animatronics know the technique, officially called Silver Eyes. If the novels are anything to go by, and they're in place of the FNAF media that drives into it, these are the result of haunted objects being photographed or filmed. She doesn't remove her eyes, it's ghost magic that produces a light in them, and she just turns the light off. And in any case, all the animatronics can actually do the eye thing. Chica is just the only one who seems to do it on camera. The Enid Virus. Enid is an amalgamation of all the Circus Baby's Pizza World's animatronics, who is controlled mainly by Circus Baby. It appeared in the Five Nights at Freddy's sister location as the final antagonist. Enid was formed by combining the Funtime animatronics, Circus Baby, Funtime Freddy, Bon Bon, Funtime Foxy and Ballora, all of them fused together. But many people believe that Enid is actually a virus because where did Enid actually come from? Where was the driving force? What was it before it was actually any animatronic? And in the Enid teaser is written, there's a little of me in everybody, which doesn't make sense because they're supposed to be an amalgamation of things together. So implying that this thing, Enid, is invading or going into the bodies of other animatronics and then melding them together, taking control of their consciousness. Hence, the Enid virus. 
Beta Endo 01. In the game's steam green light and trailer, Freddy Fazbear and Bonnie's exoskeleton look very different to the final build. The endoskeleton also included rectangle and nostrils, but these were entirely absent in the game's final cut. Not to mention, during production, when brainstorming for the fourth character, Scott first came up with the wolf animatronic. After rejecting this idea, he thought up about having a beaver animatronic, but due to bearing too much reminiscence to Mr. Chipper from Chipper and Sons Lumber Co., the beaver animatronic ended up being replaced by Foxy. Scott did eventually have his wolf animatronic, though, in security breach. So one could indeed argue that Roxy was first fought up during the original Five Nights at Freddy's. Five Nights at Freddy's Zero. Five Nights at Freddy's Zero is actually a creepy pasta, believe it or not. There was rumoured to be an unreleased game which was claimed to be the first Five Nights at Freddy's game in the franchise back in 2013, Five Nights at Freddy's Zero. It was claimed that you could download this from Scott's website, although I'm not going to go into all the details on this creepypasta, it does get quite gruesome and quite scary. I would highly recommend checking it out if you're interested. The Hidden Sister Location Room In Five Nights at Freddy's Sister Location, Michael Afton returns to his home after almost every night in order to watch an episode of The Immortal and the Restless on TV. In FNAF Security Breach, however, his entire living room has been mysteriously recreated inside the Mega Pizzaplex, right down to the popcorn and exotic butters that players could find in FNAF's sister location. Now, why would they go through the hassle of creating an exact replica? Well, they wouldn't. It is actually the room you play and see in FNAF's sister location. This has never actually been officially confirmed, but why would they make an exact replica in the Pizzaplex? This has led many theories to speculate on what the actual purpose of this was. It's almost exactly the same, except for a few notable changes. In addition to a cryptic cipher that can be found on the wall, there's a CD player that players can use to listen to all 16 collectible retro CDs that are hidden throughout the Mega Pizzaplex. These CDs contain recordings of Vanessa's therapy sessions that reveal more of her backstory as well as some of the secrets about what's been going on in the mall, but they can only be found using Roxy's eyes. Missing Kids in Stage 01 Screen In the Stage 01 minigame, there appears to be an actual missing child, which is extremely confusing because this is meant to be Fredbear's, not Freddy Fazbear's. This entire sequence and frame has led to a whole host of theories on what it could mean. Many people believe that it's a sixth victim in the MCI. Despite the fact that there are only ever five victims from what we can tell, this seems to be a sixth victim entirely separate from the MCI that was killed before the event at the Fred Bay Family Diner. This mystery is still left unsolved until this day. Have any of these in the tiers shocked you? Did you know of some of these? Please let me know in the comments below because I read every single comment. And if you did enjoy this video, please hit that like button. It took me absolutely ages to make. And subscribe because there's plenty more FNAF content coming up and there's even more on the channel. And if you enjoyed this, I highly recommend checking out my cut content video. It's exactly like this with all the cut content from all the Five Nights at Freddy games. I'm Twisty the Twisted Animatronic and stay safe out there, Superstar.